Hi guys and welcome to iGameOver channel. Today we will be going through a second part of our Computer Parts Explain series. We'll be talking about motherboards. Motherboard is the main circuit board that connects all the pieces of hardware together and as such is vital that you choose the right one. In the old days there were some insane amount of choices one had to make compatibilities to consider and so much more. Nowadays motherboard choices are much much easier. They're also way more straightforward than your average CPU choices. The chances are that you already have chosen your processor and you're now shopping for a suitable motherboard. A good rule of a thumb would be to get one that has more features that you currently need, as this makes it future-proof. It also makes it much easier and cheaper to upgrade should you choose to do it at a later date. Motherboard choice is limited by a processor you choose to use. Thus, a socket choice is out of the question. There is also a choice of chipsets, which are controller types, but that only matters if you would like to overclock your processor. It is therefore far better to first consider the motherboard sizes. And there are several motherboard sizes currently on the market. Well, let's try to go through them, shall we? The smallest one of them all is MITX or Mini ITX. This is a very small size. It has very limited expansion options. In the past, MITX was very niche and was generally unsuitable for any high performance computing, but nowadays this has actually changed quite a lot. Motherboard manufacturers decided to pay very close attention to what people were saying and many people actually wanted to be able to build a powerful but very, very small computer, either for gaming or rendering or whatever else they would want to have. So nowadays, MITX motherboards are pretty much almost like the big motherboards in terms of options just not as expandability goes because you need to think that because this is a such a small motherboard it will generally have for example only one place for your graphics cards with some motherboards that actually won't have any and instead of four memory slots for your ram you might just get two for example the overclocking might also be limited although this is not always the case well, the next size is M80X, which is a medium ATX. It's a medium in size, as the name implies, and often has all of the features of a fully sized board, albeit with less expansion slots. So, unlike in Mini ITX, you'll maybe get two expansion slots for your graphics cards. And depending on your PC case, you might actually be able to even run two cards, well, either an SLI or a Crossfire. You will also get a full set of RAM slots and uh, perhaps a little bit stable over, more stable overclocks. After that, we have a standard ATX size. That's pretty much the majority of all the motherboards currently on the market. Um, this will fit into almost any case and, well, as I said, this is an industry standard at the moment. And then you have various E-ATX uh, motherboards, which are extended ATX form factors. Those are, again, quite niche and often suited for double or dual socket um, use. Dual socket being you can fit two processors simultaneously and run them simultaneously at the same time. This is pretty much a uh, workstation category, um, not your average consumer category. Also, one thing to note is that your motherboard choice or its size will affect what sort of PC case you can use. So you can think about it like that. Either you already have a PC case or one that you want to buy because you already like it and therefore you need to consider what motherboard size you want to uh, invest in or you can't get. Or 
you choose the motherboard first, and then depending on its size, you can see what sort of PC cases will fit to it. Things you need to generally consider are, do you want a multiple graphics cards or only one? Uh, will you be using any more add-on cards like sound cards or RAID cards or network cards? Or maybe just simply how large do you want your finished PC to be? I mean, those are all things that you need to consider, maybe even all of them at the same time, because if you only want one graphics card and you're completely content with an onboard audio or you have a USB uh, sound card and you are going to be using the network card that is inbuilt in your motherboard, then perhaps you don't actually need such a big uh, motherboard and therefore your PC will be smaller. So are all things to consider. One thing that matters much less nowadays is the amount of hard drives you're going to have in your system, as any motherboard will cater to virtually all but the most expensive storage quantities. Another one is brand, as most of them offer same or similar features and quality. The choice is really more aesthetic than technological. But let us consider an example scenario, shall we? I would like to but we have a PC for light gaming. I won't need a beefy graphics card and I will only need one of them. As all motherboards have a decent inbuilt sound card as well as wired network interface, and many also offer wireless networking, especially uh, mini ITX cards, I will use those to save on space and power consumption. Why not perhaps go for a mini system with a mini ITX board? or go slightly bigger but more future-proof and go for MATX. In summary, choose your processor first, then decide on the internal amount of hardware you will use, and then choose the size that suits you best. After that, go with the motherboard that you think you look best to you, because then the choice is purely aesthetical. Anyway, I hope this uh, sort of cleared it a little bit. I will make an episode about motherboards a little bit more in-depth and especially about uh, the chipset so you get a little bit more idea of which chipset can do what. But at the moment, those are the basics of the motherboard. So I hope you enjoyed that episode and uh, come back for the next one because it will be pretty soon. And uh, like the video if you like the video or dislike it if you dislike it and please leave the comment below and i will see you soon again